happy, happy, happy 2025. Don't trust anything you see. <laughs> Hello everybody, long time no see. Until this year, whenever we wanted to do face animations, we used blend shapes, face rigs, uh, or used motion capture using an iPhone or more advanced hardware. But in the past few years, all kinds of AI generative algorithms appears, so why not do something out of them? Therefore, the question of this video is, what if we leverage these AI models to create an actual tool to animate faces from images or videos? But not in a click and generate manner, but using tools similar to what we are used to from traditional mediums. This way we can actually have creative freedom and leverage our skills when using them and not like the current methods where all of us generate the same old thing in a remixed way. This idea came to me when I stumbled upon Live Portrait, or to be more exact this online tool named Facepoke that does use Live Portrait as a backend. Facepoke allows you to move face landmark by simply clicking and dragging on them with your mouse. I love the simplicity of this concept and I want to replicate it in a tool that actually allows you to create production ready content. So the plan is to create animations driven by both facial expression sliders and audio speech generated lip sync in a way that gives us as much control as possible on timing and intensity by using an animation timeline. These deformations should apply on both images and videos that contain a face. In the end we'll want to render the final result into a video. You can find all the code on GitHub so feel free to explore with it. So let's dive in. So whenever we work with an open source publicly available AI model there is a paper about it and code available on GitHub usually written in Python. But that's AI, an area I'm still dipping my toes into so getting to use all of this is not as easy as it sounds. On short, Life Portrait consists of several steps, some of which are neural networks. To train everything, they use 200 hours of video, meaning 69 million frames of almost 19,000 separate persons. For Life Portrait to work, we need a driving image or video from which we will detect the facial expression and transfer it to what is called a source image or video. The first frame of a driving video is a base pose and is the reference facial expression to which we'll compare all the future frames to understand if the face is more happy, more sad, uh, the brows are up or down, mouth open or closed and so on. Life Portrait extracts several types of data from the driving images such as appearance features, implicit key points, head pose estimations, expression deformations and a few others and maps all that motion on the source image through what we call a warping module. Another very important part is the stitching module. Its job is to detect faces, to cut them out, to make sure that we do the processing only in the area of interest of our image and to stitch it back in using the initial pose and the initial face landmarks position. Consistency. Each frame the face looks mostly the same. This is very important as the problem with AI motion content was until last year the lack of congruency between frames. Real time. Most generative algorithms use diffusion, but this one doesn't. And this is great because diffusion is slow, but Live Portrait can run in almost real time, meaning 10 to 15 frames per second on my computer. Granular control. There are many great face control algorithms, however this one stands out because of the amount of control we have with it, on separate face regions while still managing to look realistic. Ok, so to be honest reading a paper or github code is no easy fit, but I still want to encourage you to give the paper a couple of reads and in general to read more papers and read more github code. Because yeah, youtube is fun and ChatGPT can explain me like I'm 5 almost anything nowadays, but we as developers should be able to digest technical solutions first hand, especially as future technology seems to be heavily embedded with math and statistics in a world that confuses so easily opinions with scientific proofs. So let's set it up, I'll show you what I need to customize along the way. To run Live Portrait locally in real time, I forked this repo named Faster Live Portrait. Why is it faster? I think it's because it gives you the capability to convert the Onyx models, which are models capable to run on any hardware, to TensorRT models that are specialized to your specific hardware and much faster. To install it, I follow the Docker setup in the README. That's another advantage of this version. 
Docker allows us to run the whole Python environment inside an isolated container, therefore not having random side effects from installing it directly on our machine. The steps I follow to install everything are cloning the repository inside the local folder, installing docker setup, pulling the docker image, running the command to first run the docker image, downloading all Onyx models inside the checkpoint subfolder, converting them to TensorRT. As I said, these are the models we'll use as they are faster. When converting Onyx to TRT files, I had to manually run again for some reason the following command. I don't know why, but it worked after. If all this is set up correctly, we can now run the Docker image from inside Docker Desktop, attach to it using this IDE and navigate to the Faster Life ported folder. This is a special folder that resides inside Windows but is completely synced to the interior of this Linux Docker machine. So to run the server, we simply have to run this Python script I adapted to have all we need for us to work with. I won't go much into details here, the most important parts are inside this Python script. As I said, Live Portrait either has image to image, image to video, video to image or video to video. But this script adapts it to be image stream to image stream. It's also very important to know which of the driving images is the base pose to act as a reference image for all the further driving images. We therefore open a WebSocket to listen here for either driving images or source images as we want to call the functionality from inside Unity. Whenever we get a new source image, we run the live portrait pipeline and return the resulted image. One important thing here is the stitching method is manually implemented by me using computer vision. I did this unfortunately because I couldn't make the live portrait one work, but uh, I think that can be fixed in the future. Ok, back to Unity. Inside here, at least we know most of the things that are going on. You can either clone the code and run it inside the editor or download the release build from the releases section of GitHub. But where's the fun in that, right? So that's the editor. The functionality is pretty simple. We can see in the lower right if the connection with the backend works, meaning if the WebSocket is connected. In the right part, we upload the source asset that can be either an image or a video. In the left side is where the magic is happening, as we want to use specific control, we added the proxy 3D model which is a basic model I found on Sketchfab, over which I added several blend shapes in Blender. Each blend shape can be controlled from these sliders. There is a camera in front of it that renders everything to a render texture and that render texture acts as a driving image. Every time a slider changes value, a new pair of driving and source images are sent to the backend so we have live updates. These sliders are customly made so they are keyable on the timeline editor on the bottom. Therefore, we can set up the facial expression we want, give it the timing we want and so on until we get the best results. The timeline works in 30 frames per second. We also added this button so we can add a speech audio. This is pretty cool as Live Portrait doesn't support voice to video out of the box. So how do we do it? You basically upload an mp3 file. It appears here in the timeline editor. Every time you play the sound, we have an automated library that transforms audio speech to phonemes and to blend shapes. Phonemes are A, A, E, O, U and the consonant N. We are not using AI but more classical algorithms. We use here the open source library named ulipsync and you can also give a look to rhubarb as an alternative. There are several parameters to ulipsync, but we exposed here for the user only the intensity of talking and how smooth or sudden the facial expressions should change. Overall, it is looking a bit mechanical, but the AI seems to make it organical enough. Plus, we can mix it with facial expression sliders, so it looks just the way we want it to. In the end, we can render the video we want and save the video in whatever folder we need. As I said, we communicate with the backend using WebSockets. For that, we use native WebSocket, a library you can find on GitHub, UI Toolkit. In case you didn't hear of it, it's a more recent component of Unity that aims to replace classical Unity UI. I still use both of them, but I love the new approach, it's very similar to HTML, CSS in web development. Rendering. Whenever we render, we actually go through and simulate all the frames in the timeline. For each frame, we save an image in a folder. Afterwards, we merge the whole image sequence in a first 
convert to FPS video using FFmpeg. FFmpeg is a free open source project that handles video and audio files. It's actually very complex and powerful, but to be honest, I just asked ChatGPT to help me generate the correct command line for it. We use the same software to add the audio to our video in case we use lip sync as well. FFmpeg is embedded into our program and can be found inside streaming assets folder, which is a special folder that simply does a copy paste of everything it contains inside the build path. In conclusion, the novelty we bring here is using a proxy 3D model acting as a driving image. This allows us to both have a granular control over how the face works and also to add automated lip sync functionalities to it, thing that was not possible with raw live portrait models. To properly animate things, we also create a simple animation timeline, enabling us to go creative. Besides images, the source asset can also be a video, allowing for more natural scenarios. The paired image stream of source and driving assets is sent whenever a change happens in the editor. In the end, we render our video using FFmpeg, the video being basically a 30 frames per second merge of image frames and optionally an audio. First of all, the whole app is buggy and very pre-alpha. but. My goal was more to explore the ways our tools could morph into for the next couple of years. Live portrait in itself is imperfect, and our lip sync feature can look mechanical and repetitive, but better models will come for sure and will replace the backend of this. Just as an example, a few weeks ago I found out about Memo Avatar, a much more expressive model, however it's also much slower, mainly because it does use diffusion algorithms, and as I said, they are slower. And not to speak of all paid algorithms, they indeed give better results. Results. However, their dashboards and level of control are very simplistic and constrained right now and that's crazy for a tool you actually pay monthly for. Anyway, truth is, AI algorithms are only getting smarter and smarter, simpler and simpler, lighter and lighter, better and better. However, we need proper tools so we can properly use our skills and vision in giving life to our imagination. Otherwise, we'll all create lifeless generic looking results that will all look kind of the same no matter how good the AI actually is. And I think the following years are going to give us very good solutions to these problems with tools like Confi UI or Invoke AI already emerging. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're interested in more content like this. And uh, yeah, see you next time.